Peace. This is Brother Hot Tim, and I'm coming to you live in the day. I'm with another beautiful group of young people, and that's going to help me with this story. All right? So, uh, young people, could you please let everybody know y'all in the house? to the story and the story that I'm going to tell y'all today is called the neb or witch with the ugly hat now first off I got to start the story off because you know it goes off into the, a little bit of lore neb is a negative energy being now a lot of people confuse nebs and think that they're really alive but they're not really live like us but they look like us and they are fed by the negative thoughts and the negative actions of people. The bad things you do is what feeds a nab. That's why it's called a negative energy being. Go ahead. What is a, what is a nab? Nab. N-E-B. Negative energy being. A, go ahead. Um, what does a nab really do? Basically what it does is it causes confusion it causes wars it causes sickness a nab is an energy being that feeds off of all of our negative thoughts our negative emotions and our negative actions so if you're doing something bad right basically you feed the nab but that's a long uh oh we about to y'all about to get me off is a nab another word for which well now that's why I called it a witch with 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 an ugly hat because y'all understand the witch. So a witch is basically the same thing. People thought that this was a witch, but it was actually a female neb, negative energy being. So can I start the story? Y'all yeah. don't want to hear the story. I'm gonna shut this off. Y'all want to hear the story? Yeah. All right, now, now, long ago. Maybe it was yesterday. I'm not quite sure. But there was a kingdom called Dick Dink Yam. Dink Yam. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, hold on. Now, these people's symbol, because these people were a great people, and their symbol was a crocodile. And basically what that means is that these people were adaptable. Well, anyway, they had a king, and his, the king's name was Timak. Oh yeah, I mean King his name wasn't Leroy. You know, we got we got to have old names for old kingdoms. So the king's name was Timak. And Timak was a very wise king. And he had a very young son. And the son was the heir to the throne. And he wanted to make sure that his son was worthy to receive the kingdom. Now, so what King Timak did was he called his son, young Prince Nack. His name was Prince Nack. He said, Nack, come here. I want to talk to you. Now, I'm going to be dying. I'm going to die soon because I'm very old. And I'm going to have to turn the kingdom over to you. But I want to make sure that you are going to be a good and a wise leader for our people. A good and wise leader. But I fear that you are so young that you don't have the experience to be wise. So I'm going to need you to go on an adventure. So, I need you, if you are willing, to eventually take the crown, to come to me tomorrow morning and be ready to go on a quest. So Prince Nat went home and thought about it. And he says, I'm going to do it. So early in the morning, he goes to King Timic and says, Father, I'm ready. So King Timic, what he did was he gave the prince a bag of gold. He gave him a sword. 
and he gave him a horse. Take the horse. And he told him, he said, before the sun sets tonight, I need you to start off on your journey. And the prince looked at his father and said, but where am I supposed to go? The king says, I don't know. That's why it's called a quest. You are to go out and find some wisdom. You are to go out and get and have an adventure and come back and tell me because so that I can know that you are wise enough to lead my people. So before sunset, Kim, um, uh, young Prince um, Nack gets on a horse, takes his gold and his sword, because that's all he allowed to take, and the clothes on his back, and he takes off. And he started riding the horse. Come on, everybody ride the horse. And he started riding the horse. He started riding the horse. Now, as soon as it gets dark, he stops the horse. Whoa. He finds a tree and he ties the horse up. He lays down and he looks up in the sky. He makes a little bump or like he takes a little pad because he's going to lay on. He's going to sleep out up under the stars. And he looks up at the stars and he goes to sleep. He wakes up the next morning. He opens up his little, uh, open up a little sack because he packed himself some food. He ate a little food. He made sure his horse had some water. He made sure the horse had some grass. And he jumped back up on the horse and he started riding. 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 riding. By lunchtime, whoa. He got to let the horse rest. And he got to let his butt rest, because I don't know if you ever rode a horse before. But when you ride a horse all day long, your butt is sore. So he got off the horse, he stretched his legs out, he sat down, he ate a little bit, and he looked around, and he noticed that he was outside his father's kingdom. He was in a land he had never seen before. So he got up, and being grateful, because now his adventure should start so he jumps on his horse and he starts riding and he starts riding he start riding Woo! yeah he rides slow 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 it down he rides slow because you can't run a horse all the time because the horse will get sick and die so he would ride slow then every now and then he would go fast whoa 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 so dinner time came He stops the horse. Whoa. He ties it up. He let it get some water. He let it eat some grass. Then he sits down and eats and he looks around. And everything looks strange now. Because he's in a place he has never been before. You know how it feels when you go someplace new. He was kind of excited, but then again, he was kind of scared. So he decided he was going to sleep overnight. So he laid down. He made his mat. He laid down. He went to sleep. When he woke up in the morning, he jumped on his horse. And he started riding. He started riding. He started riding. He started riding. riding. Lunch time came. Whoa. He got off his horse, he ate lunch, he looked around. This place looked even stranger, and he was excited. So he jumped on his horse, and he started riding, and he started riding, and he started riding, and he started riding. riding. Dinner time came, whoa. He gets off his horse. He allows his horse to get some water. He allows a horse to eat some grass. He pulls out his food. He eats dinner. He looks up. It's a beautiful sky. And he lays down and he goes to sleep. Morning comes. He gets up. He stretches, ah, and he looks.
looks over at his horse. But his horse is not standing. His horse is laying down dead. He slaps his head and he's like, oh my goodness. But he's grateful because the horse has got him as far as the horse did. He can get another horse because remember, he got a bag of gold. So he's not really concerned. He's grateful for the service that the horse has provided him. So what he does is he builds the horse. Where actually, he takes some rocks and he covers the horse up out of respect. Because in his kingdom, it is disrespectful to leave something dead on top of the earth. So they got the respect. They respect life and they respect death. So they have to bury everything and, and show respect for it. Now, he starts walking. And as he walks all day, all the way into the evening, he decides he don't want to sleep up under the stars no more. Not tonight, anyway. And he sees off in the distance a building. A lone building. And he don't understand why the building is here. So he goes towards the building hoping that maybe he could sleep in the building and have some shelter tonight. So he goes up to the building and he looks in the window and there's nobody in there. He knocks on the door and the door creaks open. <laughs> grabs his sword and he walks in slowly and the building seems to be empty and it seems that nobody has been in there for a while. So he goes and finds one of the rooms, one of the empty rooms, and he takes off his sword, he lays it down. He lays out his mat and he finds a little corner to put his gold in and he covers it up to hide it just in case robbers come in. And he lays down and he goes to sleep. And he's in a sound sleep. When all of a sudden he hears a loud boom. And he jumps up. And then again he hears it again. Boom. And he shakes the floor this time. And he like, what? So he gets real quiet. He grabs the sword. He makes sure his gold is still around. And he creeps out the room pulling the sword. And as he comes around the corner, he sees three men. With hammers, big giant sledgehammers hitting the ground. And one of them has cracked the ground. The other ones is digging up a grave. And they pull the body out. And he's watching very quietly. And they pull the body out. And he runs out with a sword. Because remember, in his country, they respect the dead. And he runs out and he says, what are you doing with that body? At first, the men are scared. But then they notice that he's by himself. And they say, oh, we can take him. He said, well, really, man, it's none of your business what we're doing. He says, look, my name is Prince Snack. I come from the country of Dickham. <laughs> and in my country, it is a terrible thing to disturb the grave of a dead person. And I will not stand here and watch you desecrate this man's grave. So he makes sure that they see the sword. And they say, hold on. This man died owing us money. And because he owed us money, our families are suffering. So we're going to take his body if we have to drag it over you and throw it out in the wilderness so that the animals can eat it. He says, so you will put your own soul at risk? Just so that you could be satisfied over a debt that will never be repaid? They say yes. He says, well, tell me this. How much did the man owe you since it's that, it's that important to you? He said, the man owed us 30 pieces of gold. So the prince thinks. He says, oh, I'll be right back. And he walks out and he goes to this little secret corner, moves it out, brings out the gold. And he counts out 30 pieces of gold. Here we go. Twenty-five, 
26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And he gives him 30 pieces of gold, but guess what? He has absolutely no more gold. So the man takes the gold, and they take the body and put it back in the earth. And while the prince goes into the next room to sleep, they bury the man back properly and put the stones back over the body because they have been repaid. And they kept their word, and they left, and it was gone by the time the prince woke up. But when the prince woke up, he felt real good. You know why? Because he had kept his principles. And he did somebody a favor. Even though he didn't know him, he did a good deed. And he knows that when you do a good deed, it always comes back. He didn't know how it was coming back, but he felt extremely good. So he woke up happy. He ate a little bit of his food. And his food was almost, his food was gone. But he was still happy. And he got up, he packed a few things together, and he started walking. And as he started walking, he ended up on a road. And it was a very long road, and it was clear fields all around, so he could see for miles around him. And he was walking down the road. And as he walked down the road, just to make sure nobody snuck up on him, he would always look behind him. He always looked to his side because he could see for miles if somebody was coming. And he would check behind himself, and he checked a whole lot. Because back in those days, you had these people that was called robbers that would just run up on you and try to take what you got. So he wanted to make sure he didn't get caught by surprise. So he checked behind him. He checked to his right. He checked to his left. And since he walking forward, he ain't got to worry about it. And as he was walking, he heard somebody say, hey! And they run up on him. And he grabs his sword and he gets ready. And the guy say, oh, 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 oh. I mean you no harm. My name is Uben. My name is Uben. And I'm walking on this path and I'm going in the same direction as you. Would you mind if I walk with you? And the man said, where did you come from? He said, I was walking on this path for hours just, just like you were. He said, no, you weren't. I, I checked behind me. I ain't seen nobody. Well, you must have missed me because I've been behind you for a while. So after the prince figured out he didn't, Uben didn't mean him no harm, they started walking together. And as they started walking together, as people do when you walk together, a lot of times you start talking. And the prince told Uben about the task that his father gave him. And Uben said, you know what? I don't got nothing else to do. I would love if you allow me to come with you and allow me to help you. The prince said, sure. So they're walking. And off in the distance as they're walking, a woman is coming and she has a bunch of wood sticks up on top of her head and she's walking down the road. And just as she gets right by them, all of a sudden her ankle twists and she trips over a rock and she falls to the ground. Boom! And they run to aid her. So Uben grabs a stick and a young prince tries to help her up. But the woman can't get up because she broke her ankle. And the prince says, Uben, we got to help this woman and we got to take her home. Uben said, hold on. And Uben walks up and look at the lady's ankle and he goes into his little pouch that he had on the side. He opens it up and he pulls out a little dust and he sprinkles the dust on the lady's ankle. He stepped back, and the lady's leg all of a sudden started moving. And, and then she jumped up, and her ankle was as good as new. And she looked at Uben, and she said, Oh, my goodness, my ankle feel better than it ever has. How can I repay you? Uben says, No, you don't have to, you don't have to repay me. But if you wanted to give me one of those sticks, I would gladly take it. She said, all you want is a stick and you just healed my ankle? Take whichever stick you want. So Uben goes through and he starts shaking him, making sure it's the right one. And he reaches in, he finds the perfect stick. He said, I'll take this one. She says, go ahead. And he 
she takes her basket, her, her thing full of sticks, and she starts walking. And Ubin is walking down the street with the prince, with the stick. And the prince looks at Ubin and says, what are you going to do with that stick? And Ubin says, you shall see. So as we're walking, they come upon a small city. And in the middle of the city, there's a, magi a magician who's on the street performing for money. So this magician is real good because he got this little marionette. And the marionette is moving and doing all the stuff that the man said and, and is talking as the man moved the strings. But out of nowhere, a stray dog sees the puppet and attacks it and tears it. And the man gets upset. And he takes his sword out, and he's about to strike down the dog. And Ubin says, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't kill a dog. The dog don't know what it's doing. The man said, but this is how I make my money. This is how I make my living. This is how I feed my family. That dog has destroyed the, my, my equipment that I work with. Ubin says, hold on. I can fix it. So he grabs the puppet. He puts it on the ground. And he puts it the way it's supposed to, be, supposed to be. And he goes into his pouch. And he brings out the magic dust. And he sprinkles the dust on top of the puppet. And all of a sudden, the puppet starts shaking. <laughs> then, next thing you know, the puppet jumps up and starts singing and dancing and talking without the magician doing anything. At first, the magician is scared, but then he thinks about, oh, I'm going to make a whole lot of money la, off la, of this. La, 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 And the magician says, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You have done me a great favor, sir. What do I owe you? Ubin says, you owe me absolutely nothing. nothing. No. The only thing if the only thing I would want is that sword if you wanted to give it to me. And the man said, you give me a puppet that's going to make me rich, and all you want is a sword? Take it. So Ubin takes the sword. He looks at it. He takes it out. <laughs> puts it back in the pouch. Put it on the side. And him and the prince start walking. And the prince, as they walk, and the prince says, Oh, man, what are you going to do with that sword? And Uben says, You shall see. So as they're walking, they walk up on this great big city. A beautiful city. It's almost as big and as beautiful as the city that the prince came from. And they stop outside the gates. And right above the gates are all these beautiful birds just flying around over their head, singing a beautiful song. And the prince looks up and says, oh, my goodness, that is a beautiful sight. And Ubin look up and say, oh, wow. Listen to the birds. They are singing a poem to the universe. He said, what? A poem to the universe? Yes, they are singing because they are joyous. So as soon as Ubin looks up and goes like this, one of the birds stops dead in the sky and falls to the ground. The prince and Ubin look at the bird, and Ubin takes the sword and goes and cuts the wings off the bird. He takes the wings and he put them inside of the pouch with the magic dust. And they walk through the gates. And the prince look at Ubin and says, hey, Ubin, what are you going to do with those wings? And Ubin says, so, as they move forward, they stop. And in the middle of the town, there just happened to be a parade going on. And in this parade, you got jugglers. You got acrobats. You got magicians. You got wild animals and animal tamers. You got 
You got musicians playing music. And it's a beautiful sight. But at the end of the parade, there's a beautiful princess riding on a horse. And the prince sees her. And Prince Nat says, Oh, wow. And he is just, he is amazed by her beauty. And he looks at her and he taps one of the people in the crowd and he says, Excuse me, sir, but who is that riding the horse? (laughs) They say, Oh, that's our princess. That is Princess Soph. She is very beautiful. But people say that she is very evil. Now, Prince Nax says, what do you mean? If you want to take her hand in marriage, it is said that you have to answer her riddle. And if you do not answer her riddle properly... She has your head cut off. So, the prince says, I don't care. I'm going to marry her. So, he looks at Ubin. He says, Ubin, I want to marry that woman. And Ubin says, what? Are you sure? He says, yes, I'm sure. He said, well, all right, well, if you're going to try to marry that woman, that princess, you're going to have to get some rest because you got to go and answer her questions. So, they go and find a place to sleep. Now, they go eat. Sit down before y'all touch something. They go eat and they go to the room. Now, Ubin waits for the prince to get on the bed. And Ubin reaches into his pouch. And he says, you're going to need as much rest as you can get. And he grabs some of the dust, and he takes the dust, and he sprinkles it on the prince's head. Thank you. As soon as it touches the prince's head, the prince falls back and falls into a deep sleep. Ubin makes sure he sleep, and he walks towards the window. He takes the wings that he got from the bird out the pouch. They already got a lot of the dust on it, and he takes the wings, and he attaches it to his back. And he jumps out the window and flies. Now, at the same time he's doing this, the princess is standing in her room with the door locked. And she stands in front of the mirror, and she says some magic words and turn into a bird. And she flies out the window. Not knowing that Ubin had been flying out like he was waiting for her. And he follows her as she flies. And she flies. And she flies fast. And he has to stick with him. And he flies in up over her. Because you know birds can't see behind him. He flies in where she can't see. And he gives her three whacks. Whack! 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 She's like, ah! She think it's raining or something. She's like, ah! And she flies towards this cave, or what looks like a cave, but as they get closer, it's an old shack. And she lands in front of the shack, and she looks around, and she turns back into a princess. And she looks to make sure nobody watches watch it, and she knocks on the door. And from inside, you can hear this old crickly voice saying, Who is at my door? She says, it's me, the princess. Come in. So the princess goes in. Now, the princess didn't know that Ubin was flying away so she couldn't see. And he flew close to the shack. And he crept up by the window and listened in. And the princess went in and she said, you old nab, I need help. What, what do you want? The riddle that you gave me, I'm scared somebody done figured it out. And eventually they will answer my riddle and I will have to marry someone. And I'm not ready to be married yet. You 
know, because she up under this nav spell. She don't know she up under the nav spell, but that's cool. But anyway, so the nav says, okay, let's see. I'm going to give you a new riddle. Let me see. Let me see. They will ask. You tell them to act to answer you this. Have them tell you what you are thinking about. And the princess says, yes, that's a good one. But what should I be thinking about? And the nab or the witch realized that she was wearing some beautiful gloves she says huh when they come and ask you what you when they try to answer you should be thinking about your gloves she said my gloves that's a great idea so she's happy and the nail start laughing i don't never guess that one no 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 so she goes out of the shack turns into a bird and flies away not knowing that right behind her, Uben is flying right above her where she can't see. And he got the stick and he gives her three whacks. Ready? One, two, three. She's like, ah! And she flies back into her room and she turns back into a princess. She unlocked the door so nobody gets suspicious and she goes to bed. But her back is sore now. And Uben flies back to the place where the prince was sleeping. And in the morning when the prince woke up, Uben made sure he ate a good breakfast, and right before the prince went to go try to talk to the princess, or at least get permission to answer her riddle, Uben says, oh yeah, prince, hold on, I forgot to tell you. If the prince's question is for you to tell her what she's thinking, you should say that she's thinking about her. So the prince goes, he introduces himself to the king, and he stands before Princess Sophie, and he bows to her, and he says, I am in love with you, and I will marry you. So I am going to ask you a question. The prince says, whatever. Okay, okay. Get my men ready, because you got another guy, I'm, he's about to get his hair cut off. Listen, you tell me what I am thinking about. So prince prince nat sits there quietly like he don't know and the dudes in back of him start pulling out their swords because they ready to cut off his head and you can hear it, the swords coming out so right when they almost got the swords out prince nat says hmm you are thinking of your <laughs> she says how did you know that there's no way you can know that. Wait, wait, father. I can't marry this guy. There's no way. He can't have me that easy. He cheated. You have to come back. You have to come back. The princess says, hold, hold, hold on. Princess, the rule said that I had to answer your riddle. I answered your riddle, and yet you want me to come put my life on the line again? She says, yes. He says, okay, very well, princess. I will put my life on the line. This is how much I love you. I will put my life back on the line, and I will come here tomorrow, and I will answer your riddle again. And he marches out. When he, as soon as he get out the door, he get kind of scared. And, he, and Uben is waiting for him, and Uben says, did you answer the question? He said, yes, but she want me to come back and answer another one. And Uben says, are you sure you want to marry this woman? He says, I am sure I want to marry this woman. So Uben says, well, you better get some rest because you really going to need to find out. You going to really need to be clear thinking in the morning because you got to figure out what this woman is thinking about. So the princess on the bed, Uben gets the magic dust, put a little sprinkle on his head, and he falls to sleep. As soon as he falls asleep, what does you think Uben does? He grabbed the wings, put them on his back, walked towards the window, jumps out, and starts flying in a circle, waiting for the princess. And the princess locked her door once she thinks everybody is asleep, and she walks towards the window, and she, oh, my fault, she stands in the mirror, she says her magic words, turns into a bird, and flies out the window. Now, Uben is waiting for her. 
And as she's flying, he flies in close, right behind her. And he has his stick, and he gets ready, and he hits her. She flying, she like, oh, is it rain? Well, I don't know what's going on. Oh, my back. Ah. And she flies and she goes to the cabin. And Upin lands somewhere where he's hidden. And soon as she knocks on the door, who's at my door? It's me, the princess. Hurry up, let me in. Come in. She goes in. Upin creeps up and listens at the window again. She says, oh, my God, you got to help me. Some young man came and he figured out the riddle. The, the nab said, what? Or as y'all know, the witch says, what? There is no way he could have figured out the riddle. My fault. I forgot to add this part. This nab or this witch wore the ugliest hat you could ever see. Every time the princess saw this hat, she had to keep from laughing, and she had to close her eyes because the hat was so ugly. I don't know if y'all ever seen a real ugly hat. I did. But she I did. had the ugliest hat that you could ever imagine. As a matter of fact, this is how ugly the hat was. The princess had to keep from throwing up. What did it look like? It's ugly. You got to use your own imagination. You got a question? Go ahead. How ugly was it? Like, what did it have on it? That's up to you. This is your imagination. The story. Like after I get away, hold on, hold on. Y'all can tell me in the picture. Y'all can draw a picture. But the point is, the hat was so ugly that it was just, I mean, she wore it, and it was ugly. I'm going to tell you what that tells us, but I'm going to go weak. Now, nah, I digress, but let's go on with the story. So, the, the nab sits down, and she says, hmm. Okay, so you will have them figure out what you're thinking again. She said, but what should I think about that they won't guess? And she sees that the princess has on this beautiful crown. And she says, no, not the crown. Not the crown. Not the gloves. Not the gloves. Her dress. Her dress. So, no. No, let's go back to the crown. If when they when you tell them to figure out what you're thinking, you are to be thinking about your crown. crown. And the, and the princess started laughing. She said, "They'll never guess that." And the witch, ah, no, 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 they won't figure that one out. <laughs> so they laughing. Now the prince. Now, the princess is trying not to get sick because she don't want to touch this old nab because his hat is just so ugly and scary that it makes her sick to her stomach. So she walked out the door, turned into a bird, flies away, and guess who's right behind her? I do. Ubin. Ubin is flying right behind her. And he flies in, and he got the stick, and he ready? <laughs> oh, my God. She like, ah! And she flies in. And she lands in front of this mic. And she lands in front of the mirror. And she says her magic words. And she turns back into a princess. She gets in the bed and goes to sleep. Ubin lands by the prince. Wait for the prince to wake up in the morning. Gets him a nice breakfast. And right before the prince leaves, he said, Oh, yeah, prince, I forgot to tell you. If she asks you what she's thinking about, make sure that you say that she is thinking about her crown. So. The prince goes in. He bows to the princess. She still got an attitude. You know, they're like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. You're not going to figure this one out. Okay, now this time, you tell me what I am thinking about. And the guys behind them will start pulling out the swords because they was ready to chop somebody's head off. They ain't chopped somebody's head off in weeks. And just when they was about to get it out and creep up on them, they said, you are thinking about your crown. And she says, what? Yeah. How did you know that? There's no way you could have known that. That's not. He's cheating. He's got to be cheating. Father, he is cheating. I know it. I know why she's, I know why she's. So, you have to come back. And the prince says, Prince Nark says, hold on. Your deal was, I was only supposed to guess one. 
I guess two of them. But I love you so much that I will put my life on the line again. And I will come in here tomorrow and I will answer your question. And he walked out. But as soon as he got outside the gate, he thought about what he just committed to. He got to put his life on the line again. And Uben looks at him and says, you fell for it again. She, he said, yup. I got to guess what she thinking tomorrow. He says, are you sure you want to marry this woman? I want to marry this woman. So, Uben takes him to, to the room, sits him on the bed, sprinkles the dust on his head. He falls asleep. Uben pulls the wings out, put them on his box, flies out, waits for the princess. The princess goes in front of her mirror, says her magic words, turns into a bed, and flies as fast as she can to the nab. And homeboy comes up behind her with the stick. And he gives it to her. <laughs> and he hit her as hard as he could this time. She like, oh! What is the magic word? What is the magic word? I'm not going to tell y'all the magic word. But let me finish. So, he lands. She lands. And Uben lands. Uben hides in the shadows. She knocks on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Who is it? It's me, the princess. Somebody guessed again. I need your help. She runs in. And the princess says, somebody figured out the question. Impossible. All right, I got one that they'll never figure out this time. If they ask you, you will ask them to tell you what you're thinking. And this time, you'll be thinking about my crown. Can I finish? My crown. They'll never guess that one. They wouldn't guess that one. Because she's talking about that ugly hat on her head. Nobody even know that the princess is really messing with this woman. So the princess says they'll never guess that. And they fly out. She flies away. But this time Uben don't live, leave with her. What he does is. He waits till the princess is good and gone. And he stands in the shadows. And then when he makes sure she can't see him. He steps out the shadows. And he goes up to the witch's door and he knocks. The witch says who is it? Who's at my door? And Uben doesn't say anything. He knocks again. And the witch says angrily and walks towards the door to open it. She sticks her head out. Who's at my door? As soon as she sticks her head out, Uben takes the sword and hits the hat and knocks the hat off her head. Now, this is the key. Anybody that wore a hat that ugly. That hat got to be the source of her magic. So he knocked off the hat, figuring that that was the source of her magic. And guess what happened to her? She turned to dust. So Uben picked up the hat, put it in his pouch, because it obviously it's a magic pouch. He put it in there, and it stretched out and fit the hat. He jumped up. He flew home. Now, at this time, the princess landed at home, and she was about to go to bed. But she looked in the mirror and she saw the welts on her back. She said, I am never going to that witch again. I'm never going to go see that nap again. Man, and I'm so tired of looking at that ugly hat, I don't know what to do. And if that guy figures out the question, guess what? Gonna I'm going to marry him. So she goes to bed. So Uben goes by the prince and he says... As the prince is sitting down to eat breakfast, the prince gets up and leaves. And just before the prince leaves, he usually is waiting for Uben to give him some words. And this time, Uben didn't say anything. And the prince finally turned around and said, Uben, you don't have nothing to tell me? He says, oh, I forgot. When she asks you, if she asks you to tell her what she's thinking, what you do is, he gave him the pouch. Just open the pouch and pull out what's inside. So he goes to the princess. He bows. The princess got this little attitude because she figured he ain't going to guess it. Now I'm going to have to be stuck going back and forth to this old ugly Ned. <sighs> so she says, okay, tell me what I'm thinking. So the guys in the back start pulling out the swords. Ready to chop his head off. And... This time, he don't say a word. And since they don't see him talking, they pull out the swords and they 
up on him about to cut him. And he pulls, he goes to his side, he pulls out the bag, and he reaches his hand into this little bag and pulls out this big, ugly hat. The hat was so ugly that when he pulled it out, the men with the swords screamed like babies and dropped their swords. The king started throwing up, and the girl jumped up, and she looked at the hat, and she got scared for a second, but she remembered what it was, and she says, how did you know? Matter of fact, you don't even care. I'm going to marry you. Now, I'm going to have to stop right here. Hold on. Well, I went over. Because the story is just a long story, so I'm going to stop for a second. Yo, this is Hot Tim, and I'm going to finish the story for the kids. But if you want to hear the rest of the story, you can read it on my blog. Peace.